about, we've been talking about revealing Christ and, and what it means to, and in all of the revelation that Christ gave us, love was the primary, one of the primary uh, emotions, if, if you would call it that. I don't consider the Lord necessarily with emotion, but one of the primary things that really caught my attention is how God really loves us. Yes. He loves us with an everlasting love. He, he, he never gives up on us. No. He, he, he just keeps right on. We were saying the other night, uh, I don't know what it was, uh, New Year's night or what night it was, but anyhow, we were saying how God gives us a, uh, not just a second chance, but a third, fourth, and fifth. Yes. And somebody, and then we ended up saying, yeah, he gives us a 99th ch chance. Right. <laughs> and, and then somebody said, he, something else that just made it eternal, you yes. know, because he, he just gives us chances after chances after that's chances. Right. Yeah. And uh, he just never gives up on that's us. That's right. And, right. And that's a blessing. And you know, we have to learn to never give up on people unless God takes them out. You know, God can take people out of your heart mm -hmm. to the extent that you don't even think, it's not that you you have something against them, but you don't think about praying for them or interceding in their behalf. And it's God that puts people on your mind. Yes. I, I, <coughs> someone that's not on my prayer list, I had picked up my prayer list this evening and I was trying to go through, well, I didn't try, I went through my whole list. And, but there was a person that wasn't on the prayer list. And God put a prayer in my heart for that person. And I was just weeping for the Lord and praying for that person. And they've never, you know, the, I don't say I haven't prayed for them before, but they're not on the list I have. I have a list that I'm praying for. They never on the they weren't on that list. But God just put them in just before me, you know, and I was just praying and praying and praying. So what and so I know God's doing something in their life or wants yeah, to do something right. in their life. Because right. He never put it on my heart like that. Right. And uh, I was thinking if 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 there's an individual that God takes off of your heart, that's sad. That's really sad because that means that God is not now. That, I'm not the only one praying for different people. You know, there are other people praying, hopefully, for everybody yeah. that they have somebody else praying for them. But my point is that if God really just erases somebody from your mind and you don't ever think about praying for them, there's something going on there. You know, God's either going to teach them a lesson or something's going to go on that uh, it's not too good because all of us need somebody interceding in our behalf. And so I just praise the Lord. But anyhow, this scripture says, do you have it, uh, Mother, 2237? Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. Okay, yeah. This is the first great commandment. That's, that's all I need. Uh -huh. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. Uh, I think we'll go read the next one. Uh, and then Saint John, 13. 13, mm -hmm. 34, and 35. Mm -hmm. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, 35, mm -hmm. by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if you have loved one to another. That's right. So, uh, as I said, we chose for a theme for this, uh, uh, I don't know this is going to be a series, but just for tonight, uh, loving God, I mean, loving God as he loved us, is that what you're For saying? loving us. For loving us. Loving God for loving us. Loving God. God has asked us to love him with three things, <laughs> our heart, 
our soul, our soul and our mind. And we just want to kind of uh, pot in all those three things. He wants us to love him with our heart, soul, and mind. And he says it's the first commandment. But then in John, he goes on to say, I'm giving you a new commandment. So this, this other commandment is the first and great commandment, but he doesn't say it's the greatest. Not here, at least. He says, because I'm giving you a new one. And not only do I want you to love me with all your heart, soul, and mind, but I want you to love others. But the other one had said, and your neighbor as yourself. But he said, what I'm telling you now is, you don't love your neighbor as yourself, but I want you to love one another as I have loved you. And that's another that's another notch. That's a huge notch. <laughs> that is another notch. <laughs> love one another as I have loved you. Now, how can you do that? And I, I always, when I think of that scripture, I always think of uh, Bishop Jenks, and, and he was saying how uh, he read the scripture. You no, know, he had read it many times, but it just fell on him how the scripture says to uh, love your wife as Christ loved the church. And he said, my God. He said, he died for the church. And I don't know what I'm ready to die for this woman. <laughs> you know, but it, I mean, that's, that's something else. But that's what I'm saying. This second commandment that he gave, the new commandment, he said, unto you, you love one another as I have loved you. So don't love your neighbor as yourself. Yes. Because you may not like yourself too much. Right. So I don't want you to love me like you love yourself. <laughs> That's something to think about, isn't it? Don't love me like you love yourself. I want you to love me. I mean, I'm saying me, but you know, that's for everybody. Love, he said, I want you to love like I have loved you. That's some kind of love. Now, if we strive to do that, folks, don't you know we'll have a world full of love? Oh, yes. Amen. We'll have a church full of love. Yes. yes. If you just love folks like he loved you. What did he, how did he love you? Well, the scripture says he came to give you abundant life, number one. So do we try to make other people's life more abundant? Or do we try to put the brakes on their life? You don't want them to be happy. Because you're not happy. Haven't you seen people in uh, situations, uh, particularly marital situations, where they weren't happy, so they didn't want, the, uh, whether it was a man or a woman, they didn't want the other person to be happy in their relationship because they weren't happy in their relationship. Have, have you seen that? I have. Mm -hmm. And they would try to disrupt your relationship with your mate because they're having problems with theirs. But he says, I came into the world that you might have an abundant life. I want you to have an abundant life. So what does that mean? Now he said, first of all, he said, <laughs> the, what is the heart? You know, we talk about the heart. It's not talking about this beating heart. You all, we all know that, right? Mm -hmm. But the heart is where love, hate, joy, sorrow, peace, bitterness, courage, and fear are felt. I'm going to say it again. It's where love, the heart is where love is felt, where hate is felt, where joy is felt. You say, I feel joy in my heart. I just feel joy, right? And when she said that, sorrow, my heart is sorrowful. <coughs> peace, I feel peace. And also bitterness, courage, and fear. The scripture says men's hearts will be failing them for fear. People have been known to... Uh, jump out of windows because their heart failed them for fear. I have heard of, I haven't heard of it.